is welcome all dear viewers and we thank the lord for this opportunity that he has given us uh, yesterday was a, a wonderful presentation on our the historic events that have been taking place and uh, how the agricultural system has been changing from here to here. And we also saw how there has been a change in the original forms of agriculture that God set in place to ensure that there is continuity and also productivity in all that is being grown. We found that the earth industries or chemical fertilizer industry was developed by the Rockefeller family, the Monsanto family, a uh, Monsanto group. We also found that the seeds have been changed and there has been a mechanical um, development of the soil that has hampered the growth of crops and destroyed the soil hygiene as well as the soil uh, biology. And so we are called to practice better methods of farming. That is what we are going to discuss today, restoration, uh, restorative mechanisms in the farms. So let's pray to get into the study today. Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us this opportunity and chance that we may hear you speak to us and educate us. So be with us in Jesus' name, we pray and believe, amen. Well, so let me share my screen. We are all called to be garden missionaries because the first occupation that God gave unto man in the beginning was stealing and dressing uh, the land. But we need to understand the right methods of tilling and dressing the soil in a way that the soil biology, the soil bacteria and all other things that encompasses uh, proper land management is set in place. So we are going to learn today proper methods of gardening and this is part one. Part two will be tomorrow when we'll be handling pests and disease. The Bible says that again and again, the Lord has instructed that our people are to take their families away from the cities, the countries where they can raise their own provisions. For in the future, the problem of buying and selling will be a very serious. We should now begin to hear the instruction given us over and over again. Get out of the cities into rural districts where the houses are not crowded closely together and where you will be free from the interference of enemies. So everyone who is interested in gardening should seek for a land, however small or big it would be, to begin doing what we have been studying. And we have to set farms in a secure places where we'll be able to grow foods and also be able to preserve seeds um, that are not tampered with. Proverbs 22 verses 3 says, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. So the world is coming to a crisis. Already there is a crisis setting in and the wise men will be very prudent enough to make sure that they set up the institution of farms 
in whichever places God will allow them to make sure that they produce enough food for their families, as well as the people that God shall provide, uh, shall be leading to them. Genesis 2 verse says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life and man became a living soul. So man was formed from the dust and from the dust shall he eat all the days of his life. And if he eats from a soil that is unhealthy, he will not live, uh, will not have a vital uh, force enough to survive. Gardening began in heaven. In Ezekiel chapter 28, there is a Eden or garden of Eden in heaven, a pleasant land in, uh, in, in heaven that the angels and, uh, and the inhabitants of heaven practice gardening. And that is why God presented a model of that farm in the beginning, the pleasant land in the east that he grew fruits, vegetables, nuts, and grains. And God is calling us to set something of that sort in the rural districts where we are called to go. So, and the Lord God planted a garden store in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So God has set everything ready for man to make sure that he can be able to manage the farm. You remember in Genesis chapter 2, <clears throat> sorry, Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 says that God gave man dominion and even authority over the earth. And that authority has been misused. As Galatians uh, 7 verses 9 says, God had given created man upright, but he has hewn many, many inventions. So out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. So we have the fruit trees and not this because this is going to help us in restorative mechanism to bring the soil back to health. The tree of life for also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden and from thence it was parted and it became to poor health. So the best occupation that God gave unto man was gardening. It is the highest call in the world today. That is how it should be. The best occupation that our creator gave to man was to till the land what a wonderful work for us even today. God is a lover of the beautiful. He has given us unmistakable evidence of this in the work of his hands. He planted for our first parents a beautiful garden in Eden. Stately trees were caused to grow out of the ground of every description for usefulness and ornament. The beautiful flowers were formed of rare loveliness of every tint and hue perfuming the air. It was the design of God that man sh should find happiness in the employment of tending the things he had created, and that his want should be met with the fruits of the trees of the garden. So God set farm in place so that man could find happiness. If we have lands and we don't find happiness in tilling and touching the soil, then we are in a misplaced work. This world need not to be your home or your, the place of residence. But God put farming or garden in place to make sure that it checks in our indulgence habits and refine us and make us to be a people who trust us, us so uh, completely in, in God. So in Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cast is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So because of sin, 
Now we face challenges like weeds, challenges like uh, pest, like pest, and challenges like worms and all these viral infections that we get in the uh, in the in the farms that we produce and uh, the farms that we take care of. But God. The way he set the farming restoration plan, it meant development, power, and happiness. The chain condition of the earth through the curse of sin has brought a change in the conditions of labor. Yet though now attended with anxiety, weariness, and pain, it is still a source of happiness and development. It is a safeguard against temptation, its discipline places a check on indulgence, self-indulgence, and promotes industry, purity, and firmness. Thus, it becomes a part of God's great plan for our recovery from the fall. That is why the end time Advent farmers need to realize the spiritual implications of garden work. So, we are called to practice proper methods in these last days because we are seeing the degeneration in the farms. So in Ministry of Healing 193.3 says, many who till the soil fail to secure adequate returns because of their neglect. Their orchards are not properly cared for. The crops are not put in at the right time. And a mere surface work is done in cultivating the soil. Their ill success, they charge to the unproductiveness of the land. False witness is often born in condemning land that if properly worked, so look at that. If the land is properly worked, will yield rich returns. The narrow plants, the little strength to put forth, the little study as to the best methods call loudly for reform. There is a garden reformation that each and every family, each and every a need to understand in order to bring a solution to the world's problem. There is little study. Our people today have not been studying and experimenting to see what works best in the locality and in the areas that they are in. So we see the genetically modified organisms set in place and the GM foods have brought a lot of problems to the human society, lots of tumor and diseases. So these are the things that are affecting us that we as a people need to change and actually come up with a solution so that uh, we can have a healthy nation, a healthy family and a healthy people. So there is a need for Christian farmers to do this work. Christian farmers can do real missionary work in helping the poor to find homes on the land and in teaching them how to till the soil and make it productive. Teach them how to use the implements of agriculture, how to cultivate various crops, how to plant and care for orchards. So in this class today, we are going to learn how to use, how to cultivate uh, crops and to plant fruit trees in a soil that is restored. We are going to look at the factors that hinder the productivity of the vegetables, the grains, the nuts, and the seeds that we produce. Let proper methods be taught to all who are willing to learn if any do not wish you to speak to them of advanced ideas. So there are advanced ideas to be applied in this end time. Let the lessons be given silently. Keep up the culture of your own land. Drop a word to your neighbor when you can and let the harvest be eloquent in favor of right methods.
demonstrate what can be done with the land. We're going to step in to the um, in uh, into the uh, footsteps of presenting um, a farm that is going to act as a representation of what was there in the beginning. So what are the things to consider in gardening, more so garden planning? We must have a plan for our farms in order to succeed. These planning uh, methods are what is going to bring results, is what is going to protect us from the endangered environment of today. Each and every one of us must understand these plans. We must have a plan for our gardens. We should not just be uh, we should not just be planting helter skelterly or haphazardly. We need to have good planning for our gardens. We must know that we must supply water for our gardens. We must know that successful gardening requires water. Source of water must be uh, ascertained. And then we look at the slope, how you're going to orientate your farm. You must, you're going to check into the weather and the climate of the temperature of the soil and of the place where you are. You're going also to consider light because these are the chief principles that affect the, uh, the biota of the farm. When I speak about the biota, I speak about the bacteria, the fungi, uh, the mycorrhizas in the farm, in the soil that makes your soil to be healthy because soil is a living, is a living organism, if I may say so, because it needs living organism to live in it. There must be air into that soil. There must be warmth into that soil. That soil there must be humus into that soil. And it must be in a place where the sunlight is able to penetrate through the plants and the crops to make sure that there is abundance of production. So we look at the slope and orientation. How should you uh, make sure that your farm is uh, well orientated or placed well. You must understand how the plants interact. God himself set the farm in the east because that is the sun rising position or location. So that during the day there will be maximum supply of sunlight to make sure that your plants are strong and have strong immunity and also be able to manufacture a lot of food. So the tall trees should be in the western side and the short trees or the short plants or crop should be on the eastern side. So when you are setting your farm, make sure that the sloping, the orientation is uh, from, um, is from the uh, from the eastern side to the western side. Most of the farms slope uh, from the uh, from the east to west. Some from the north to south. But the best orientation for the farm should be from the east to west, so that there is maximum uh, maximum. Uh, maximum light to make sure plants are able to grow. And for you to protect your garden, like yesterday, someone asked how we need to protect the cross pollination. You need to know which plants or which crops to plant to surround your farm. There are plants, there are trees that if you plant around your farm, will be having high affinity for any free uh, free ionized air or free pollens in the air. They trap it and it cannot penetrate into your farm. What are these trees? Trees like pine, trees like, sed uh, like cedar, trees like cypress, uh, trees like fir are very important 
trees that when we plant them on the edges of our farm, they are able to trap in the free pollens so that they cannot enter into your farm. The only safety for securing your farm is planting these trees around the farm to make sure that they protect any strange free radical or pollen or chemical in the area. Uh, we also, if you do uh, specific studies on the needle-like leaf trees, the pine, the cedar, the cypress, we find that they are able to uh, they are able to increase oxygen supply in the vicinity of the area that they are in. They are able to filter any chemical in the air and they have high affinity to trap it and tap it to make sure that it does not oscillate around your farm. That's why in the spirit of prophecy, we are admonished to plant the needle-like leaf trees around the farm. You need to know which specifics of those trees. They need to be trees that are able to make, uh, to make your soil to be in a good, uh, uh, good aerated condition. The pine, the cedar, the cypress, the far, the um, uh, which are the gravelia. All those are very helpful in restructuring and reestablishing re the soil, uh, uh, the, 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 the soil texture, as well as aerating the soil. So those trees need to be planted around your farm to protect you from all that may arise. So we must imitate nature to help us in building the soil you will see that there is an ecological succession as a model uh, in every uh, effort to improve the soil. Ecological, ecological succession is a process of change in the species structure over time. The established species influence the soil composition and alter it over time. Significant difference in soil found in the bare field than in the forest. The main difference lies in what kind of microbes are most prevalent in the soil and what they feed upon. Generally, fungi respond to surface decomposition, whereas bacteria prefer soil disturbance. So if you go into the forest, <coughs> you will find that the underneath this uh, underneath the the, the forest, there is no pests, there is no, uh, uh, we don't have weeds growing. It is because of the dead debris in that soil that help it to retain moisture, that help it to have uh, a regulated uh, normal pH for the plants and crops in that area. You will find fruit trees of different, uh, of different types are uh, are, are growing together and you will get that there is no paste or not even any leaf that has been eaten. So that is the what we need to transfer into our farms. How will we do that? By planting the trees that I had mentioned. The idea is bringing in the indigenous trees. If you plant indigenous trees, they are very helpful, helpful in bringing good compost that are able to restructure and develop your soil. You will also realize that nature itself speaks to itself. How? Whenever there is a bare soil, nature will speak. And what will happen? There will be grass continuing, beginning to grow. After some time, there will be some plants beginning to grow. After some time, the trees will begin to, draw, to grow. And then over a period of time, there will be a forest developed into that area. When we develop a mini forest in our farms or surrounding our farms, we will be able 
to, re, uh, to retain the nutrients, we'll be able to supply enough, uh, enough humus for our, our soil or compost for our soil that is going to make it so healthy and very nutritive for the good bacteria. The weight of fungi present in forest soil is much greater than the weight of bacteria. And then in grasslands, however, there is around an equal distribution of the two. In agricultural soils that are routinely tilled in contrast, the weight of fungi is less than that of bacteria. So you will find that in, uh, in, in, in the forest areas, the bacteria levels are high, the fungi levels may be a bit less. In the grassland where we find the pastoralist mostly, or in the plains, uh, the, 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 the microbacteria tend to be less and the fungi, uh, sorry, the, 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 the weight of fungi is less than that of bacteria. It means that there's a lot of bacteria uh, in the grasslands than the fungi. But all these are helpful for, uh, for the maintenance of your soil. So we have three situations to look on in order to make sure that you develop a good soil that is able to sustain itself and protect itself against pests and against virus and against fungi. We have the annual gardens or market gardens where people produce for marketing and also produce mostly vegetables for the, for the home use. And then we have the grasslands or the pastoral lands where people mostly graze animals and there is minimal tillage in those areas. And then we have food forest where people grow uh, fruit trees or or tall plants that are actually uh, uh, as a, a major food supply in those areas. So the annual gardens or markets uh, or market gardens, how do they look like? Like the picture there, the annual plants colonize bare soil following a disturbance as they wither and die at the end of their growing season, their remains fall on the ground and act as mulch that bacteria and earthworms feed upon. This cycle repeats itself annually with organic matter building and the creation of humus. So we need to understand that when we develop market gardens or, or these uh, vegetable gardens, it needs to sustain itself that the remains from those vegetables or crops that have died needs to be piled back into the soil to make sure that they feed the micronutrients. Now, how do we accelerate the conditions of bacteria and maintenance of humus in the market gardens or vegetable gardens? Number one, what you need to understand is, what you need to understand is that don't disturb, don't disturb the subsoil and encourage biological tillage. When you are setting your farms for vegetables, don't disturb the gardens by overtilling ever, over and over again. Lay your, mule, your humus, lay your, uh, your compost, and also surrounding your farms with plants like Tithonia, plants like uh, lemongrass, plants like comfrey, plants like um, Lantana camara. They help you to protect the ground so that you will not be able to lose a lot of nutrients. And also make sure that you protect your farm that there is no washing out of the nutrients. That you can do by setting your farm in the right slope and making sure that there is no flooding. So don't disturb the subsoil and 
encourage biological tillage. Biological tillage is where you allow the, the earthworms uh, and the good, um, the, 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 the good bacteria to work on your soil to break it down by itself. It only, it only works or it only becomes successful when you provide food for those bacteria. What are the foods for the bacteria? The compost, the, 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 the sugar from the, we call them glycosides or foods that are having sugar in themselves. You can, uh, if you have grains that have, have been uh, um, have spoiled, so to speak, you need to put them back into the soil so that they can provide glycosides for your bacteria to grow. So another thing you need to do is soil pH has to be maintained in its right, uh, in its right scale. Soils can be classified according to their pH value. 6.5 to 7.5 is neutral and over 7.5 is alkaline. Less than 6.5 is acidic and soils with pH less than 5.5 are considered strongly acidic. You need to understand your soil pH so that it, the plants in there are not going to be affected. Most of the time you need to make sure that the pH is maintained by applying uh, dolomite or things like lime, the agricultural lime that will balance the pH and bring it into the normal level. You need not to apply overlap in, in a right quantity so that your soil is able to sustain the good bacteria. Soil pH affects the amount of nutrients and chemicals that are soluble, soluble in soil water. And therefore, the amount of nutrients available to plants, some nutrients are more available under acid conditions, while others are more available under alkaline conditions. However, most mineral nutrients are readily available to plants when soil pH is near neutral. That is 6.5 to 7.5. Most of the plants also thrive in that environment. What help us to maintain that environment? Compost from fruit trees or from easily breaking leaves and manure and also the glucosides that I had said before. The development of strong acidic soils that is less than 5.5 in pH can result in poor plant growth as a result of one or more of the following factors. There can be aluminum toxicity or manganese toxicity or calcium deficiency or magnesium deficiency. Then low levels of essential plant nutrients such as phosphorus and molybdenum. And then alkaline soils may have problems with deficiency of nutrients such as zinc, copper, boron, and manganese. Soils which with an extremely alkaline pH greater than nine are likely to have high levels of sodium. So the, we need to correct balance where the soil pH is between 5.5 and 7.5. So every effort should be taken to check soil pH levels regularly. Early identification of soil pH problem is important as it can be both costly and difficult to correct long term nutrient deficiency. So uh, the calcium deficiency and magnesium de deficiency has led to poor soils in many, many places. And then these two linking minerals, the phosphorus and the molybdenum, molybdenum you know that the phosphorus, if it is there, it is what causes your calcium and the magnesium to go into the soil. And then calcium is able now to direct most of the nutrients, direct most of the nutrients into the plant. And then again, if your soil is having, is low in manganese, most of the nutrients like uh, calcium still cannot be 
uh, assimilated into the soil and then into your plants. So you need a good balance of this. The only way, uh, direct way that you can do that is bringing your soil to life with compost. So good compost supplies both the organic matter for soil building and the fertilizer for the crops. And most importantly, it's packed with soil organisms that trigger biological activity. You want to, you want to have a farm, the soil having good bacteria maintained. In it. How do you do that? You can choose to make a multipurpose compost. And a multipurpose compost can be used as a pesticide, as a fungicide, as a, as a fertilizer, either a foliar spray or maybe just to restructure and develop your soil. What do you need? You need rice husks, which is rich in copper, calcium, carbon, and zinc. And then you will need goat and sheep manure that is rich in nitrogen. And then you need cow dung. Cow dung manure uh, nit has nitrogen and phosphate. Rabbit manure also has ammonium nitrate and copper sulfate. And then you need biochar. Biochar is just um, uh, charcoal that has been broken down into small pieces. It has carbon and it helps to bind all the nutrients together. Then you have molasses, blackstrap molasses, rich in magnesium, calcium, iron, potassium, and trace minerals. And it also provides glycosides. Glycosides are sugar, uh, sugar elements that feeds your soil and bacteria in the soil. Then you will brew comfrey or titonia to make a concentrate like 10, 10 kilos of comfrey, you add to 20 liters of water and then ferment it for 14 days. And then after 14 days, you will start and you will add it into this compost. Then you have Epsom salt that has magnesium and sulfate. And then you need also to have a vermicultured soil to add microbes into the soil. Vermicultured soil is just a soil that is made in that a way that it makes a lot of bacteria to grow in it. So what are you going to do? The procedure is mix your ingredients together in this ratio. You will have four parts of rice husk, four parts of goat and sheep manure, two parts of cow dung, two parts of rabbit manure, three parts of biochar. I can say also four parts of chicken manure or poultry uh, manure, then 20 liters of molasses, 20 liters of comfrey concentrate. Comfrey concentrate is a brewed comfrey. For every 10 kilos of fresh comfrey leaves, you add 20 liters of water, brew it for 14 days, and then you will add it into the, uh, the other dry components. And then you will have you will add five kilos of Epsom salt and stir well, mix properly, and then you add the vermicultured soil with microbes. Then you will cover with a dark polythene for about uh, two weeks, and then you turn it again. After two weeks, uh, you, you, you turn it again so that it mix properly. You can add more molasses or more of the comfrey or Thithonia or Lantana Camara concentrate. So you need to mix them well. And then uh, you add the comfrey, Lantana or Thithonia uh, concentrate. And this will be very rich. Be turning it after every two months for two, after every two weeks for two months. And then once it has turned color and it is black, it is ready for use. You can either use it as a foliar, you can either use it for a fungicide or use it as a fertilizer for planting. And for planting, you'd only use two tablespoons in every hole as a 
polia, you will use one kilo in five liters of water. You put in five liters of water, you allow it to stay overnight. In the morning, you will stir, you will stir, and then allow it to settle for some time, sieve, and then apply it on the roots or on the leaves of your vegetables or your plants. Very, very effective. So that is bringing your soil to life using good compost, complete fertilizer. If you cannot manage that, you will have the, the droppings, the leaf drops of any, um, any, any fruit tree or any lantana camara or comfrey or titonia or any plant that easily, the leaves easily break up and compost very fast. This will help in building and maintaining a good soil. You need also to know how to, uh, to plant cover crops. The cover crops like Irish you know, sweet potato are very helpful in restoring a soil that has been affected by the fertilizers of today and also the glycophosphates. glyphosates. Uh, if you plant sweet potato over and over again in your soil, it will be able to restabilize that soil. And it also protects the, um, the good bacteria in the soil. Maintain organic matter with mulch also. You need to know what things help you to, uh, to, to form good mulch. So what are they? The maize stalks after harvesting your maize or even uh, removing the maize cobs, you need to grind them or cut them into small pieces. And then during rainy season, you apply them on the farm, they will be able to break up and also protect your soil. The bean husks or the green beans, not green beans, green manure made from beans wherein you grow beans for one month and then after one month, you plow them back into the soil. The sweet potato vines, you cut them in small pieces during the rain season, apply them on the soil. It will be very helpful. The red clovers, the alfalfa, the soy husk, the rice husk, the comfrey leaves, the sugarcane leaves or alfalfa are very helpful mulches that you can your, your food crops. So use crop rotation to mimic diversity of plant in a bed for a long time. Make sure that you change to make sure that you are able to control the pest. So with the crop rotation, you can actually mimic the diversity of annual plants growing on a bare field. Differing root system among plants beneath the soil to different depth, improving the soil structure. So you need to make sure that you grow plants that are uh, uh, disease resistant, like the chia seeds. Um, another plant that is resistant to diseases are a sim sim. They help you to protect your garden. If you have plants that are amenable to pest, you will plant the chias or the um, the cheers or the simsim around the farm. And then in the middle of the garden, you plant your vegetables that are uh, affected or vulnerable to diseases. That is a way of controlling pests and help you to, uh, to make sure that your production is increased. Con continue to do the rotation you plant uh, fruit trees that are able to cope with other plants or other crops, the bananas. Uh, you need to know when to plant and how to plant and the areas that you need to plant them so that they don't affect uh, or create shade for your plant. But in the same time, they help to, uh, to increase the 
the, the, the productivity of your farm. You will find that it is a blessing for those who cultivate the land and God is able to give them a blessing of rich harvests that will cheer their hearts. And lastly, for the grasslands or pastured lands, this is how you need to restore them. Always keep your soil covered with perennial, perennial cover crops. We had said before, and then don't disturb the soil. Ensure the lowest level of mechanical disturbance is uh, this lowest level of mechanical dis disturbance possible. Land diversity must be maintained. Make sure that you grow different kinds of plants and crops. Plant plant disturbance in a form of animal impact and plant grazing. So those who are in grasslands, you can agree or choose to grow, to, to allow the, the, the animals to feed on the cleared farms, to make sure that as they step on that soil, they, they, they surge in the, the nutrients that will feed the microbes, as well as uh, make sure that they reduce the, the grass in the area. That will help to make you a uh, uh, um, your bacteria to continue maintaining your soil health. You need uh, we need here also the third type of of of, uh, of lands that we have are food forests or permacultured orchards. For the permacultured orchards, you need to understand the principle of maintaining them. Improve the soil with green manures and transitional ground covers. And then plant, do the companion planning, uh, planting, use uh, mulch. You can, the good thing for making mulch is lemongrass. And also a good plant for helping you to protect the plant, the crops from pests and diseases is, com or is uh, lemongrass. Plant lemongrass around your farm and you will never see any pest touching the leaves of your plant. Not even a snake will be there. And then comfrey should be helping you to continually provide mulch and also compost for your soil. Comfrey is able to restore soil that has been under cultivation for a long time and where nutrients have been de depleted. Plants like alfalfa needs to be cut down into the soil. Plants like pokeweed, I've realized that where pokeweed grows, there is no paste around. Even the, 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 the crops growing that are vulnerable to diseases and pests are always in good, good measure and in good shape. And then pine, cedar, fir, and cypress need to be planted in the garden or outside the garden, around the garden to protect from any fungus, any virus, or even any pests. You need to plant nitrogen fixes, which are very helpful. The leguminous plants, the, 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 the um, peas, uh, the peas, the beans, the, the, G, the, the groundnuts or the peanuts, soybeans, red clovers help to fix nitrogen into the soil. So this is what we can say in ending, that the God of nature is perpetually at work. His infinite power works unseen, but manifestations appear in the effects which the work produces. The same God who guards the planets work in the fruit orchards and in the vegetable garden. He never made a thorn, a thistle, or a tear. These are certain work. The result of regeneration introduced by him among the precious things, but it is through God's immediate agency that every bud burst into blossom. When he was in the world in the form of humanity, Christ said, 
my father worketh hitherto, and I work in John chapter 5, verse 17. So when the students employ their time and strength in a cultural work in heaven, it is said of them, you are laborers together with God. We need to be good laborers with God. And then we learn to be patient. You need to be patient to restore a soil that, has, that is unproductive productivity. You need to be patient. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receiveth the early and the latter. May God bless us as we contemplate upon this noble call that God has given unto us. I want to pray to end. Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us this educative forum that we may learn how to manage and protect our gardens and to restore them. For we are in the time of crisis. Oh Lord, may you help us. Provide for us, we need lots of funds, but still that little that you've given us, give us strength that we may make use of it. Let your blessings be upon us tonight. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen.